Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of real estate data um, in Boston, Boston housing data, and we're going to try to predict the median value of owner-occupied homes. Uh, this is represented in thousands of dollars. So um, we're going to use a random forest regressor to make our predictions. And uh, this is a form of ensemble model that con combines a lot of a lot of d different decision trees, um, and uses bootstrapping to uh, create an aggregated results result uh, that will be, in this case, a regression, uh, like a linear output. Uh, and we'll be trying to model the median value of a given house. So let's go ahead and import NumPy and pandas. Uh, standard scalar and train test split function from sklearn and we're going to use this random forest regressor from sklearn.ensemble alright we can load in the data using pandas.readcsv and we'll get the file path right over here data.csv now let's take a look at it so we have 14 columns and here's what we're trying to predict let's take a little uh, look at the information about the data set um, as we can see, all the columns are numerical, so that saves us a lot of work. Uh, however, we notice that there is one column with some missing values. Not to worry though, it is not a substantial number of missing values. Um, it's only five missing values. And because that column is numerical, we can solve the problem by just filling in the missing values with the mean of the column. So let's uh, say pre-processing and I'm going to say data sub rm that's the name of the column with missing values dot fill na which means fill all missing values with a given value the value we're going to fill it with is just the mean of the column and then we'll set the column to be that so now if we look at the uh, na values I'm going to sum over it so we get the total number of missing values, total missing values uh, is zero. We are fully, we're done with dealing with missing values. And uh, I'll just take another look at the data. Uh, now let's split and scale the data. So I'm going to split it into X and Y. Y is what we're trying to predict, which will be the median value. So data sub MEDV. Uh, dot copy, so I'm going to make a deep copy of it, and then x is going to be everything except the median value col column. So I'm dropping it from axis 1, and I'll make a copy of that. Then I'm going to create a standard scalar object from sklearn, uh, which I will use to transform x, so that's all of our input, uh, all of our feature data. Um, I'm going to use fit transform to give each column in x a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. That way each column or each feature will take on a similar value of ranges. Alright, now we'll split the X and Y into train and test sets. X train, X test, Y train, Y test uh, equals I'm going to use the train test split function from sklearn to split uh, and give a train size of 70 percent. Alright, so now this is uh, training. And what I'm going to do, uh, this is a pretty quick video, but I just want to, uh, I want to make two, uh, two models, one using bootstrapping and one not using bootstrapping. So by default the random forest regressor does use bootstrapping, which means it's going to take smaller bootstrap samples from the data uh, to construct the trees. Uh, each tree. Whereas if we turn bootstrapping off, we'll be using the entire data set to construct each tree. So I'm going to call it no bootstrap model. That'll be a random forest regressor. Uh, and the number of estimators, or the number of trees, is going to be 100. That's just the default value. And we can uh, sort of <coughs> give our loss function here. Uh, criterion is MSE. And then I'm going to turn bootstrapping uh, and set it to false. And we can fit the model, model.fit, uh, 
no, no bootstrap model dot fit uh, on X train Y train. All right, uh, then I'm going to do another one. This time, we will use bootstrapping. I'm just going to turn that to true, and let's compare the results. <clears throat> so I'll print out the R squared values for each one. Um, R squared is a good way of getting a sense of how well your <coughs> regressor is fitting um, to the data. Basically, uh, it's a measure of how spread out the data is from your fit. So R squared without bootstrapping first. And we'll just call, a, we'll use a no bootstrap model dot score. Score will return the R squared value. And we're scoring it on the <coughs> on the test set, XSY test. All right. And then we'll do the same thing, but with bootstrapping. And I'm doing that for the bootstrap model. And as you can see, we have uh, a much, well actually it's not, it's not a huge improvement, but it's definitely improvement. You can see that bootstrapping does improve the performance of one of these regressors. And I didn't use a random seed for the, for the train test split. And when we were dealing with such a small amount of data, uh, like 500 examples, the split can have a large impact on the, uh, the performance of our model. So if I were to run this whole notebook again, we may get different results. This time the uh, highest value of R squared is 70. Run it again, we get 79 this time. You can see it varies wildly, but it seems like each time we do this, we always get, um, the bootstrapping model is always performing better. All right, so uh, I, this was a short video. I just wanted to quickly demonstrate uh, Random Forest Regressor. Um, I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.